Hi, John. How are you? Good. All reports are that systems are go for launch. Um, for our viewers, can you tell us where the various teams are right now? Sure. The critical personnel for both SSL and the customer are in the control room here in the building 92850, and they're monitoring the health of the satellite. Russ Pritula, the ILS program director, is in the bunker with the Kurnichev team. I'm in the communication room at 92850 and will be provide, providing real-time updates to you and the customer on the status of the mission. All of the non-critical team members have been cleared of the launch pad into a safety zone and are now waiting to view the launch. And my mom is watching from her computer in Arizona. <laughs> Hi, Come Judy's mom. mom. So we have... Um... Computer in Arizona. <laughs> Hi, Come Judy's mom. mom. So we have... Um... We're about a minute and change from launch. Uh, hey, Judy, just one question. What number launch campaign is this for you? Um, I'm getting up to almost 20. I'm 19. Well, thanks, Judy. Stay safe and good luck to us okay. all. Now, before we get to the final moments before launch, let's take another quick look at the weather in Baikonur. It's mostly uh, clear at this point with some upper-level winds, um, but all within constraints. Um, and we're currently very much go for launch. We're about uh, 45 seconds from launch. Rocket's quite impressed with the view on the launch pad. All the four stages together with the payload fairing is 58.2 meters or 191 feet tall. The launch vehicle has a dry mass of 48,000 kilograms and 698,000 kilograms wet. About 20 seconds from launch. Coming up on T-15 and we're going to step aside and listen to the final countdown. We have ignition and liftoff of the ILS Proton launch vehicle with the AsiaSat 9 satellite on board. About 10 seconds after liftoff, the launch vehicle performs a roll maneuver to align the launch vehicle pitch axis with the planned northeasterly launch path. Plus 30 seconds. Going through a cloud there. Now the vehicle will soon experience maximum dynamic pressure, or max Q, which is when the aerodynamic force on the vehicle has peaked. For Proton, the max Q occurs at 62 seconds after liftoff at a velocity of Mach 1.6. Visible condensation that appears to be a Unfortunately, uh, disappearing into the cloud, we don't have a live video, but we're uh, getting the mission simulation shown. shown. Everything seems to be proceeding nominally as the vehicle ascends over the suborbital trajectory along the route, which provides a parking orbit inclination of 51.6 degrees. You see a telemetry page there of the, uh, the actual flight telemetry being plotted against the, uh, the nominal um, uh, route. About 90 seconds into launch. Now we're coming up on the first stage separation from the second stage. That's set to occur at two minutes into the flight. In order to maintain a constant level acceleration, the second stage engines ignite prior to separation from the first stage. On a clear day, unlike today, uh, launch site observers may be able to see a halo effect as the second stage engines ignite. Uh, still awaiting confirmation from Baikonur, but at this time um, we should have a second uh, ignition of the second stage and a separation from the first stage. Still watching the plot of the uh, telemetry from the vehicle being plotted against the uh, nominal trajectory. And we have confirmation of ignition of the second stage and confirmation of good separation from the first stage. We also have confirmation of uh, the planned level of thrust on all four of the second stage engines 
uh, and the second stage is going to operate for about 3 minutes and 26 seconds. The next key mission milestone will be the separation of the third stage from the second stage at L plus 5 minutes and 27 seconds. About 20 seconds into the third stage operation, the density of the atmosphere at that altitude is lower so, that the, so then the payload fairing can be jettisoned. As the mission proceeds, the launch vehicle travels from Kazakhstan into Russian territory. And then our viewers may notice some brief planned delays in our reporting of key mission milestones because the telemetry has to be relayed through multiple ground stations and, and facilities. John, thank you so much. The first burn of the Breeze M, the Breeze M upper stage is scheduled for completion about 16 minutes into the flight. Our live coverage will conclude shortly afterwards with mission updates posted to the ILS website, Facebook, and Twitter pages thereafter. Now, located in the heart of Silicon Valley, SSL is a world-leading provider of innovative satellites and spacecraft systems. SSL satellites connect billions of people around the world, providing essential connect billions of people around the world, providing essential communication services such as internet connectivity, ultra HD television delivered directly to homes, and mobile communications for ships and planes. Here's a little more about SSL and the performance, power, and reliability of the AsiaSat 9 satellite. All right, so John, obviously we just watched a launch take place at night, mm -hmm. but we've done some together that have happened during the daytime. Sure. So what determines the difference, day or night? The time of launch is actually driven by several factors that affect the design of the final flight profile. profile. First, the mass of the payload dictates if we can perform a GTO insertion, such as today, or for a lighter spacecraft into a direct insertion into geosynchronous orbit, or GSO. This affects the number of breeze and burns required and the length of the burns and the mission timeline. In addition, for GTO missions, the spacecraft manufacturer usually has a requirement for what's known as local solar time at perigee or LSTP. GTO orbit, they have a certain constraint on the angle of the orbit to the sun. And as we all know, the Earth-Sun angle changes throughout the year. So this leads to a daily LSTP window that varies slightly from day to day. Once we know the spacecraft mass, the mission type, and the LSTP, LSTP window requirements by the satellite, the crew chest specialist, specialist can essentially back-propagate a mission design, leading to a required liftoff time to meet all mission requirements. In our case, it's a launch in the wee hours of the morning for the AsiaSat 19 in Baikonur. Good for us in Washington, D.C. today. Not so convenient for our AsiaSat customer in Hong Kong, where it's currently around 3 a.m. And since our last update, I did get confirmation that we have had stage two, three separation and stage three is burning. At this point, the payload fairing jettison should have occurred as well. And that occurs at a velocity of about 4,600 meters per second or 2.9 miles per second at an altitude of 138 kilometers. And that was just confirmed to me over, over my IFB as well. So our next major milestone happens in a few minutes. That'll be the separation of the proton's third stage from the breeze and upper stage. All right, thanks, John. We've talked about it a little today, and we've given some of our viewers a baseline knowledge of the ILS Proton. Now let's take a more in-depth look at the mainstay Proton launch vehicle. The total height of an ILS Proton is between 184 and 191 feet, around the same height as a 19-story building. Its gross liftoff weight can be around 705,000 kilograms, or 1.554 million pounds depending on payload and fuel weights. 
Proton's initial launch was on July 16, 1965, carrying the Proton-1 spacecraft. If we begin our in-depth look at the Proton in a manner chronologically consistent with the launch phases, we see that the first stage consists of a central oxidizer tank surrounded by six outboard fuel tanks. Each fuel tank also carries one of the six RD-276 engines that provide first stage power. Total first stage vacuum rated level. The second stage is a conventional cylindrical design and is powered by three RD-210 engines plus one RD-211 engine. It develops a vacuum thrust of 2.4 meganewtons or 540,000 pounds of force. The third stage is powered by one RD-213 engine and develops thrust of 583 kilonewtons or 100 and develops thrust of 583 kilonewtons or 131,000 pounds of force. It has a four nozzle vernier engine that produces thrust of 31 kilonewtons or 7,000 pounds of force. Guidance, navigation, and control of the Proton M during operation of the first three stages is carried out by a triple redundant closed loop digital avionics system mounted in the Proton's third stage. The Breeze M upper stage is powered by one pump-fed gimbaled main engine that develops thrust of 20 kilonewtons or 4,500 pounds of force. It is composed of a central core and an auxiliary propellant tank which is jettisoned in flight following depletion. The Breeze M control system includes an onboard computer, a three-axis gyro-stabilized platform, and a navigation system. Finally, the payload fairing. It consists of two symmetrical payload fairing halves and a static envelope diameter of 3.87 meters. There are multiple payload fairing designs presently qualified for flight, including standard commercial payload fairings developed specifically to meet the needs of ILS customers. The payload fairing for commercial launches aboard an ILS Proton separates at the nose cone in a planned maneuver, leaving the Breeze M and the spacecraft together known as the orbital unit to continue the journey to its planned orbit. And that is an at-a-glance look at Proton and its stages. Well, since our last update, I did get confirmation that the stage three operation has completed successfully and that we do have a separation of the orbital unit, which is the Breeze M and the spacecraft from the third stage. So now we're just waiting on the next mission milestone, which is the first ignition of the, uh, of the first five burns of the Breeze M upper stage. All right, John, thank you so much. The Breeze M upper stage is designed for injecting payloads into low, medium, or geosynchronous orbits. The main engine can be restarted up to eight times during flight and allows precision injection of the spacecraft into the target orbit. Now let's learn more about Proton's technology and its role in the AsiaSat-9 mission. Soon we will have stage Soon we will have stage three separation from the Breeze M. The orbital unit, or the spacecraft together with the adapter, separation system, and Breeze M, will be traveling at approximately 7,300 meters per second at the moment of separation. Or more, M will ignite for its first burn about Flight one and, and a half minutes later, and will last about 4.5 minutes. About four minutes after the first main engine cutoff, or MECO-1, the vehicle is scheduled to go out of range of our ground tracking stations. Breeze M.